This is What the Spot, a podcast where we read and talk about paranormal erotica novels. I think you mean paranormal romance novels? How about some of both? So you don't have to. Today on What the Spot, we will be talking about Life and Limb, a standalone zombie reverse harem romance by Michaela Hayes. None of us expected to live more than a few days when our friends and family became the walking undead, consumed by the Mortem Mori virus. The zombie apocalypse came and went, and humans formed a new world in the chaos. The bend is a law unto itself, a town on the edge of Haven City and ruled by greed and fear. I might be a mercenary, but I'll do anything to protect my people. Our ragtag community looks out for each other. We kill for each other. When a set of important blueprints goes missing, my boss wants the mess fixed pronto. The offer is too good to be true. Find the plans and he'll buy my freedom. But there's a catch. I have to work as part of a team. Four men chosen for their skills. Each one more dangerous than the last. And I've had enough of dangerous men to last me a lifetime. I'll do anything to protect the bend. But what about protecting my heart? What do we think about this? um, The summary of this book. I think it's pretty good it's a damn good synopsis damn good somebody actually read the book and wrote the synopsis yeah. in my opinion <laughs> who knew we, we should really focus on this sentence of four men chosen for their skills <laughs> let's go yeah <laughs> 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 yeah those skills I like the skills that they were chosen right? for <laughs> That's so funny. She would choose them for their skills. I wonder what that resume looked like. Uh, uh. (laughs) It was just their OnlyFans. No big deal. (laughs) Welcome to Wild and Bad, your weekly Sunday night salacious podcast full of erotic stories and sensuous meditations and excerpts from your favorite erotic books. And anything else that might make you feel so good as you lay in your bed, letting my voice take you where you need to go. With me, Devlin Wild, erotic hypnotist, storyteller, and erotic voice artist, founder of Wild Desires, and creator of Experiential Erotica. So go ahead and fire up your podcast app. Join me at Wild and Bad for free. Every Sunday night at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. And let's make Sunday night your night of deep and sensuous pleasure. And never forget that everything I do is with your pleasure in mind. All right, so let's talk about the characters. Let's start with Amy slash Amelia Tucker which her first name is barely mentioned at all. She's just Tucker throughout the whole book. Yep. And I like that. I was confused because I, I was, I read her as Tucker and I'm like, I feel like her, was her name Amy? I'm like, no, that was the last book we read because Amy was a snarky badass. So she can't be Amy. We can't have two Amy's. We can't have two Amy's. No, but we did. And I feel like there were only two times that they said her name. Yeah. That's why I wasn't confused because the college best friend says the name and then the ex fiance or the ex says her name. And it's so like takes you out of who she currently is that it's Mm -hmm. cool to me. So I always complain about when people have names and nicknames and blah, blah, blah. And it keeps me from following the story, but she was Tucker to everyone that mattered. And the people who were from our past. Exactly. It like helped me understand that these weren't the people who are really in her life. Like mm. people who call me Kanzada or um, people who call me Candace or people who call me like by some other name other than Candy, which there are a lot of them like out in the world. They're not my people. <laughs> so when anybody called her Amy or Amelia, I was like, oh, not her people. Cool. So it set the playing field for me really quickly when somebody called her by that name. 
I didn't think about it like that, but that totally makes sense. And I feel like being called by your last name is... Definitely in my brain, it's like a military or law sort of thing, like norm. Yeah. So I feel like it kind of set the tone for the character that, I mean, it set the tone for the character, like what role she's playing in this like dystopia. Yeah. yeah. It, and the other thing is, it's like when you have a really common first name, I think people get called by their last name or their middle name. Mm. Right. So if I wish somebody would call me by a different fucking name, (laughs) Karen, we could call you by a different name. We could call you by a different name. Whatever snarky nickname you have for me, you keep it to yourself. (laughs) (laughs) It goes trying to figure out when this book was published because I'm trying to like figure out what season of Walking Dead this is based on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because that's terrible! You know me? No, no, no! I think it's awesome. Like I was definitely placing characters from the book with like characters from mm-hmm. Walking the Dead. The Walking Dead. Yeah. Well, this was published in 2021. So whatever season the author is currently on on Netflix. Which makes sense. <laughs> which like, makes you know. sense. So she binged the whole thing. I mean, Michonne definitely, I think, fits with Amy. Oh, oh with the sword and everything. She really the does. Sword which is so and- funny because the, the picture I had in my head of, of a Tucker was, and I hate to say it because I'm just old as fuck, it was Lisa Bonet. Who's that? Googling. Uh, the <laughs> From... oldest, the second oldest child on the Cosby show. Uh-oh. She's married to Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> but that's just because I'm old. And then I was like, I wait a minute. not married to Lenny Kravitz. Oh, She's she what? Or she had, she had... Jason Momoa. Is she now? Shit, you're right. Yeah, that's why I was like, I know that name. Am I wrong? <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I'm wrong a lot. No, I think she was at one point was in the she? relationship. No, she was. With they had Lenny a Kravitz. kid together Whew. and everything. Yeah. Good. I'm not remembering an alternate reality. Okay, but she's described as a black woman, right? Yeah. Well, she's mixed. Why is mm-hmm. Why is the cover a white woman? I don't fucking I had, know. Why I think like, it's is there any? Right? Even look at the cover. The cover drove me fucking crazy that the cover is a white woman with blonde hair and pigtails. Yes, the girl Ew. has bleached hair, but, but she is a, she's a mixed race. Well, she's a mixed race woman with short hair. And sometimes she does have it in pigtails, she said. Yeah. But well, yeah, the cover, I was like, what's going on here? But I was, I was. And like, what, what is, what is that? Yeah. Well, yeah. that? No. And what's with the eye makeup? What is? I like yeah. the eye makeup. Yeah, I, feel like, I was down with the eye makeup. Know, and it's it's past the apocalypse. You know, not everybody's running for their lives, so you have time to do your makeup now. Uh, sure, but she's not sense. wearing those shoes either. <laughs> no, for sure. She's a mercenary. Um, yeah. I feel like Tucker would be wearing pants with pockets. Of some sort. Yes. Well, the entire time she was in jeans. Right? The entire time. Every time they described what she was wearing, she was in jeans. In jeans. And button fly jeans most of the time because they often described how they were taken off of her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hot. Uh-huh. Um, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> like, the just the cover doesn't do it justice. So we can we can, we can can talk about how the cover doesn't quite do it justice. I imagine Michonne. I get to make up whatever character looks like in my head. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and and I was totally Lisa Bonet um, with the sword. I can see it. Like, Mich- can totally like see Michonne, it. for sure. Um, but, uh, like, I felt like she was a little more... Like, Lisa Bonet in... What was that show that followed the Cosby show when she went off to college? With Dwayne Wayne and the whole... Another group. World? Yes! Lisa Benet in Another World. <laughs> Only the apocalypse happened right after she finished college. So that was my... <laughs> I would be down for a reboot. That is that. 
Who made that happen? Thank you. Do you I, know how old she is now and it's fucking ridiculous? Do not tell me I don't want to be involved in that storyline. <laughs> okay. Share. No, Go ahead. He is old. She's 53. That's she fine. looks like she's in her freaking 20s. Easily. Easily. She's fucking Anyways. gorgeous. Yes. She's Maybe like, yeah. like having sex with Jason Momoa has just turned her back in time. <laughs> he has a magic well, dick. <laughs> and Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> like she right, had Lenny Kravitz. Like, yes. <laughs> right? Um, but back to the actual character that's portrayed as Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> I really did think that this was a fantastic character. And I thoroughly enjoyed the depth that we were given in this yeah. character that's Tucker because she both loves and hates in equal measure. Hard. So I, hard. Yeah. Like she is, <laughs> she's experiencing everything and she's not really holding back. I mean, she says she's holding back the love thing and I get that a little bit, but she's also just like, really, really putting herself in the middle of things. And as a person that does kind of keep myself away from experiences, reading this character that like fully flings herself in to a missing goat or <laughs> whatever and tries to like go after the problem. I just really loved reading this character. I did too. I really, really liked her. Me too. I thought it was very interesting that she, like, like you said, equally kind of flung herself into the path of like dangerous men, but also like I have to find this goat. Like it was, just, <laughs> it was very, <laughs> just very like it. I feel like it really told you a lot about her personality and her values mm -hmm. and the girls being sent to her. Yeah, yeah. That put me on Team Tucker. That we got the fact that she was um, a social worker. We like. I feel just knowing that she was a social worker gives us so much more background about her. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and the reason she wanted to protect the bend is not because she couldn't have fit in with the rest of the society. It was because these were the left behinds, and she yeah. wanted to protect the left behinds. And she wasn't a left behind. Like, not really. She was protecting those people who were being left behind because they didn't really fit in. And it was really beautiful. Like what Lisa was saying, like, yes, she knew all the working girls and they had bonds with her. But it's not because she was one of them, but it was because she understood and protected their role in society. And she was really like a advocate and a voice for them. It, I I kind of want to be Tucker when I grow up, except for song zombies. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind the zombies. <laughs> maybe not, but maybe Tucker. I don't know. <laughs> she's tough and she's not. So it's cool. All right. Well, let's talk about Griffin Graves. Griffin Yum. Graves. <laughs> I have to say the last name because it's foreshadowing. Just yum. I fucking love how they meet. Yes. Me too. Uh, but I hate that they don't explore it more later on when he says that he knew who she was and who he was fighting before they got into the ring for that first fight. I fucking hate that we don't know more about that. Well, I think it was just because okay. she, like, like, she also, she's always talking about, oh, I'm just a. Uh, Aaron Runner, or I'm just, you know, I'm. It's not mm -hmm. much. I think it just was him saying, like, I know all the things that you've done. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. True. But yeah, it would be it would be kind of a cool backstory. I got excited when he turned out to be Grave Digger. Did you? Yeah, I thought that's just yeah. so perfect. That's so cool. I was also mad at myself for not figuring that shit out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really? <laughs> I was so mad. As soon as, myself. As soon as I like Fuck. read his last name and then he was like, let's move on from the grave digger. I was like, yeah, no shit. 
I was like, I didn't blame it, it on my all. tiny. Really? My I didn't pick it up at all either. Uh, no, no. Yeah, no, I'm so mad. Like he's like, no, it, 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 the grave digger's not real. The grave digger's not real. Um, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. I, Graves. <laughs> Mr. Graves. <laughs> I guess I wasn't paying enough attention to his name, but I did not pick it up at all. Me either. At all. <laughs> I was so upset when he got bit and they had to leave him outside. I was too, except like as soon as the little dumbass says in the bathroom that they're doing all of this for the goat inner who's it, what's it? I'm all like, oh wait, they just got fucking high on a whole bunch of those so rock and roll <laughs> he's not really dead <laughs> okay, so i was really dumb during the reading of this for some reason and i did not get that either yeah me oh, I was like, and and i was like yeah he'll be fine because he's like a main character main character and he's not just like he's like because she met him first he's like like the mainest of the secondary characters so i was like like, this is not a Dean Koontz novel. Like, they're not just going to... This is not Stephen King. They're not just going to... Do you hear me snort right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> they're not just going to, like, get a, get rid of him and early. For me, um, I, I was really, really... I really thought it had happened. I was like, no, 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 no. I really thought it happened until they dropped that Bezos or whatever the fuck the... <laughs> the things, the stones that grow in your stomach are. The, the goat stones. Can the we just call stones. them goat stones? Like, Let's call them goat like stones. Sunstone, <laughs> goldstone, we'll just call them goat stone. Until they dropped the goat stone and the name of the goat stone and the it was the thing that they got high on. I was like, oh, everybody was high on goat stones. He's fine. It's cool. <laughs> is it weird that I kind of want to get so high gross. on goat stones? I, I mean... Hey, if it makes you all lusty and shit, rock and roll. I'm just saying. And like, I, as soon as there were like, ch- there was a goat, and then there was another goat with an open stomach, and then there was right? another, and oh, I was like, the fucking goat is a goddamn answer here. Yeah, there's something <laughs> going on with the goats, and obviously. I was like, are they like, trans, like, using them as mules? It's a transport. Like, was, what is going on with the fucking goats? And then I was like, it's, it's the answer. That should be the name of this episode. Something's going on with the ghosts. <laughs> Next oh. on the agenda, we're talking about Griffin. And then we're going to talk about Cole. Wait, Cole. Cole is the pretty boy. Yeah, like... He was lovely. He was... Uh, like, to me, he was every frat guy I ever did I was going like. to say a frat boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Every frat guy yeah. I ever didn't want to like, but I liked anyway because they were actually pretty nice, but they still were just like the cute like, you frat know, guy. Weirdo. You know he wore like pink shorts with a button-down shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, I spent too much that. time on his hair. I got it. Um, But he also seemed like the one who was willing to like be open yeah to be open and to like break the tension and to be the one that talks when nobody wants to talk and to like yeah yeah he likes like that the mood yeah so he was like, the happy one right the squiggly happy one i like that with all of his wings <laughs> that would drive me up the yeah. wall uh, not me not if they're genuine if they're yeah. a genuine human and they're just doing that because they want to make you happy and disarm you then fine but if they're being like ivy is doing right now with her swarmy <laughs> finger guns finger guns whatever yeah like yeah. Goof- uh, well it depends if you're goofy about it or you're i don't know like like i said every frat guy that i wanted to hate um but ended up not hating that's to me cool because there were plenty of frat guys that I wanted to hate and still hated. <laughs> <laughs> he is Fair. the one that, that was like, oh, wait, he's Fair. just a really cool guy that also happens to be that guy, too. <laughs> it was also just a really nice guy and a really down-to-earth guy and a fun guy to hang out with. So I liked him. And he was integral to the team being a team. <laughs> Because yeah. if it hadn't been for him, like nobody's boundaries could ever come down because they wouldn't have been able to let them down. He was the one who helped everyone kind of shed 
some of their insecurities because I feel like he was the one they all trusted implicitly. Yeah. And his personality was very disarming. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And he was the first one to follow her out on the goat adventure. <laughs> Which is so, great. <laughs> He's like, I'm not, gonna He's go, like, not going to go goat adventure. <laughs> she, said like, we were, she said she was going to go get a goat. <laughs> it's like, bye. And she's like, he's like, wait, what? What we're go I, we're going to get a goat like but I also love like, like when he got there he's all like oh my god there's really a goat there <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 like like I don't what what, I, what kind what? of coat is she using right? like, oh, like, what is she gonna pick up? drugs chocolate I don't know what is forbidden in this dystopian world and then he didn't want to give up the goat he wanted to keep the goat oh, oh, I did like that. Which is one of the things that made him so endearing. Yeah. Because he's like loving on the goat. And like he's just to mm-hmm. everyone that he comes across, he's very loving and open. Cole would definitely carry like a bunny rabbit in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I can definitely see that. And he dove into any situation, just took it in stride. Like with the poker mm-hmm. game, it wasn't his meeting, but he just dove right in and started playing. He'll just do it all. Um, let's talk about Jace. Okay, I'm going to fess up a little bit here. Um, <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense at all, but I am still having trouble discerning between the names of Jace and Noah, even though the characters of Jace and Noah are entirely different. Is anybody else? The fact that Jace wasn't on the list till I added him a little bit ago, because I was like, that was four <laughs> guys. That's all bad. That says a lot. <laughs> I was Sorry. like, wait a minute, we're missing someone. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you added him to oh, our God. list. I was like, I felt like I was missing somebody, mm-hmm. but I couldn't remember. Sorry, Jace. <laughs> Sorry, bro. And that so, is his character. <laughs> well, I, no, but Jace is the guy from the Wastelands. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is the one who protected his sister, and he is the one who knew her high, college girlfriend. And... Uh, yeah, that's as far as I can go, really, with that. <laughs> But I had it's so weird because Noah has this very distinct, very, very distinct character arc, and Jace is not. And I just I don't know why I kept mixing the two of them up because they don't deserve to be mixed up, but I I kept doing it. Yeah, I feel like I knew more and I felt more about Noah because I felt like he was more of an upfront character. They talked a lot about how he could just fade in and out, and he was like a ghost, he's like a chameleon, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, sorry, Jace. I also evidently completely forgot about you. Like, the one thing that I really remembered is that Jace was getting a blowjob from Colt. Is Jace the one that named his cock? Jace is the one who had named his cock. Um, I thought it was Noah. I think it was Noah. I wasn't. Okay, sorry. I think it was Noah because Noah was like the the one she was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? What did it, what did he call him? Monet. Monet. Because the fucking Let's work see. of art. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty was clever. Fucking brilliant. Yeah, it was Noah. It was I would Noah. literally punch, Noah was quiet. punch somebody for that. I call him Monet wow. because he's a work of art. I put, I, I made a note and I was like, I think I much prefer it when the women name the cocks because remember in <laughs> like Finn, the girl names the cock junior. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. I just yeah. prefer it when the women name the cock junior anyway. Huh. Um, <laughs> so Jace, yeah, he, I, I, I mean, I thought he was a good character, but he just wasn't as standout as the rest of them to me. Yeah, he was just kind of useful for that scene when they went to the wasteland um, to inquire about Laura. So it's like he didn't have a huge role in the book. It was just mm-hmm. that that day in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Chase. I do like that name, though. Chase. It's a good name. Yeah. yeah. It is a good name. 
Well, and he has a really good character. It just, the interplay between him and the other characters and her isn't as interesting as the others. Mm-hmm. Simply. Yeah. yeah, agree. But Noah, <sighs> on oh the other hand. Oh God, the hate fucking. N- Noah. <laughs> Noah. <laughs> fucking Noah. Poor, poor Noah. Get it together, Noah. Um, I don't know, though. God. She did not stand a chance against Noah once she found out that he was raised in the foster care system. Mm-hmm. Like, she was a fucking goner. And this has absolutely nothing to do with a positive, healthy relationship with two <laughs> people. But you know it's true. As soon as she found out that that was his background with her being a social worker... And her being sexually attracted to him and this whole situation happening, it was just Mm -hmm. over. I mean, I I thought it was really interesting because he played so many characters within his character. I felt like he was like, oh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Like, I am so shy. But then, like, he isn't. And then also, you know. (laughs) He is not. (laughs) He is is not, not. But, you know, when they first meet, he's very, like subservient and like okay like it's fine um but also you know he's the one he heard her screaming during a nightmare and came and checked on her and i mean i liked that i just think it's really interesting to have a person who can like play all the parts and he's a switch and, <laughs> and not be like a villain I thought that was, you know, because usually if, if you can, you know, if you're like, oh, this, and then I'm that, and then I'm this, and then I'm that, it's often that's that's a bad guy or have, like, bad guy tendencies in a book. Um, but I thought that was interesting. But I think we were also supposed to think he had the bad guy tendency. because a the first time agenda. She, right, because we run mm. into him or she knows that he was working with her ex, right? <laughs> and... Oh yeah, that's right. He was a beardy, bearded guy, right? Right. Like she. That's right. That helped her escape. Mm-hmm. Huh. But I mean, right. that's the thing. Like, he helped her escape. So why didn't that, in and of itself, make her think that he was a good guy? Just because you are a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> he has big time baggage with that True. guy. The the True. that guy that's that we're going to talk about in a second. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, but like but, that baggage could like over over like shadow everything. Like, well, yeah, overshadow. That's what I was looking for. Overshadow any uh, like brain, like well, actual- and to be truthful, it could have been a whole game. It could have been a oh, mm-hmm. here's this guy that I'm gonna hire to go be part of that team because that team had been broken up for a year, right? Mm-hmm. So. Like, it totally makes sense. Noah was a really interesting character, and I loved the interplay between the two of them and his interplay with the rest of the team. Um, Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was always sort of on edge. Is Noah a good guy or a bad guy? And when Noah gets shot in the basement, I'm like, well, how lucky is that? That some guy who just killed a whole bunch of people managed to not kill you. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so I can see that. Like, there were still questions. So good right I mean, like good storytelling. No, I'm not gonna me, say good writing. Good but I will say good storytelling. He, for me, he was a good guy when he showed up on the goat hunt. <laughs> oh yeah, because he showed up like 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 creepily, like like yeah. after Colt. But uh, like that can be sketchy. That can be a little like <clears throat> Suspish bad guys. Let's talk about the bad guys. The two main bad guys in this um, in this book, Rex. Let's talk about Rex. He's not the baddest of guys, but he's her current employer, um, and evidently does does cage fights and other things. What do we think about him? <sighs> he's just a he's just like the sketchy mob guy. He's yeah, kind of really that's how I felt. Like he's bad. not like like he's just a, he's sketchy as fuck. Just like, yeah. I really, really wish I had any affinity for like mob movies or any of that stuff, so I could like 
pick out the mob <laughs> movie gangster that was the less horrible human being and mm-hmm. say that's Rex. But I don't know any of that shit, so I can't. <laughs> what was? Uh, oh my god, what was his name? Somebody did somebody watch the fucking Sopranos? Was there like a less bad um, bad guy? <laughs> what was Daryl's brother's name in The Walking Dead? Oh, Earl. 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 Wasn't was it Earl? I feel like it was that guy. Like he's not Mer- Merle. Merle. Like, Merle. Merle. Close Merle. enough. <laughs> If we're going to go The Walking Dead, though, okay, Rex is the governor of, um... Ale- not Alexandria. Not Alexandria, Alexandria the, the little town where Merle actually ends up kind of dying. And Gantz is Lucille's paramour. Why can't I remember his name? Daddy Winchester? I know nothing of the show. <laughs> I don't either. Negan? Yeah. Negan, yes. I heard about this. Who is also Daddy Winchester? Who is also Danny Duquette. <laughs> I am not obsessed with him at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Agreed, though. Karen, me. Oh, me, my me, God. Right here. But uh-uh. Negan is only sexy in The Walking Dead because of his redemption. Right. But Negan is also uh, sexy as Daddy Winchester. And it's yeah, also like, sexy <laughs> as Danny Duquette. Danny Duquette. Like he's, yes. that man is just something else. And he Sorry. is something else. Gantz is like, I feel like he's on another level. He's just like, if you imagine like the kingpin, like a dickheaded kingpin ma- manipulative motherfucker, that's Gantz. Uh, the thing that gets to me is, yes, he is abusive asshole, for sure, for sure. But then the way he treats the apocalypse um, on top of that. Because you've got, like, your standard garden variety asshole abuser. And then you've got Gantz. <laughs> so <it> was, <laughs> like... Taking that to the next level of Mm -hmm. um, using the horrible situation that's happening around him uh, to make his fiefdom, essentially. And anybody like that, any book or movie or anything I've ever seen, they're always the, for me, just the epitome of what I hate about humanity i mean yeah when we talk about like the one percent or whatever this is what i think of i think of this person who has no care or concern about how any of their gain affects anyone else so like his sheets are washed you know daily he has yeah. daily laundered yeah. sheets in a place where most people <laughs> can't even get a meal regularly. He has uh, electricity and running water where folks like aren't really sure that they're going to be able to feed their families. He drives so, around to show off his car when people right. can't run their fucking generators because of the lack of gas. It's yeah. He's yeah. gas. And, and not, not for any good purpose, not, because he's trying to go gain supplies or because he's trying to uh, pull things together for other people just simply as a show of power. And Rex, on the other hand, is really sharing a little bit. I mean, yes, he's a little power hungry and he is the top of that food chain, but he's also sharing the wealth a little bit mm-hmm. like he wants to be the the top of his pyramid but he has a pyramid of people that are actually relying on him as opposed to Gantz who is just the only one who matters in the scenario right that makes sense so there's the difference between the two of them in my mm-hmm. mind makes and sense. he's an abusive motherfucker yeah we don't <laughs> like him do you think he actually loves her or is he just obsessed with her? I think with a person like Gantz before or after the apocalypse, there's no difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I don't think he loves her as much as he just wants to have her because possess, she like doesn't possess want her. Mm-hmm. Well, and possess her whether Skills. or not she wants yeah. her. Like when she wanted him, he still wanted to possess her, and so no one else could have her. Yeah. So he could use what she had. She was just another resource that she need. He wanted to have <laughs> his thumb on. So, like love her i like i don't think he loves anything but mm. gants like a sociopath for sure please fuck mary kill with us go to whatthespot.com and tell us he would fuck mary and kill we will share your votes when we record our next fuck mary kill episode which will i promise happen eventually it's going to be <laughs> epic y'all <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike from the Genuine Chit Chat Podcast, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. I speak to a wide variety of guests, including CEOs of businesses, psychologists, authors, musicians, travellers, people suffering with physical and mental illnesses, and everyone in between. Where we speak about a large variety of topics, including music and movies and pop culture, but also some more controversial topics, including drug reform, political correctness, and many more. No subject is off limits. You can find us in all the usual podcast places, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, as well as on YouTube. And you can follow us in all the usual social media places. And to be clear, I don't expect everyone listening to enjoy every episode of my show. What I do think is that due to the wide variety of guests and topics, that there'll be at least one episode that each person listening will enjoy. So if you still appreciate the art of conversation and want to hear honest conversations with interesting people, then be sure to check out Genuine Chit Chat in all the usual places. Hello, awesome listener. Have you ever wished that you had the ladies of What the Smut all to yourself? Do you hate sloppy seconds? Do you find yourself hoping you could listen to us early and ad-free? Well, I have the solution for you. Head on over to patreon.com and see what we have to offer. For as little as a buck a month, you can listen to What the Smut and have all your smutty podcast fantasies come true. Like, I chose this book because it was different than any of the books. This is my book. Um, So I chose this book because it was different from other books that we've read. And I decided that for my books this season, I would choose books that have some that that we haven't read, like with some aspect of it that we haven't read and zombies. I mean, I think we've had a few necromancers, but we really haven't had zombies. And I was looking forward to like a shit ton of zombies. Um, <laughs> so oh when God. I was so scared, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to run in close so here. Like, I don't know. Like I was, I mean, I was not sure I was ready for that, but like I was, but I was like ready for that. Like I wanted it to be a little bit different and weird. So when I first, uh, so I basically is a hard no for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Good to know, Karen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I thought, but I was like, okay, this is weird. It says it's a zombie romance. So I was like, yes, okay, that's weird. Cause I'm just one of, I'm just really looking for a weird, interesting book to talk about. Um, mm-hmm. So I downloaded it, I looked at it, and then one of the first things that it says is like, this is not a supernatural <laughs> book, this is not paranormal. This is about science. And I was like, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, oh, okay, but you're talking about zombies. Like, not to be a weirdo, but a lot of our paranormal, I'm putting that in quotes, paranormal books that we are reading can be explained by science. So, like, the shifters happened because of some science thing. Or, like, all of the paranormal is really just normal but hidden um, yeah. with the yeah. books that we read. So the fact that there was a whole opening thing about how it's not supernatural, it's not paranormal, it's just science. And I was just like, that 100% put me off. <laughs> like, not because I needed to be paranormal or, like, weird or creepy or supernatural or anything, but just, like, yeah, like, all – like probably 65% of the paranormal books that we read are because of a virus or, you know, it's the, it's a virus that causes vampires or it's a virus that causes, I felt like that was not necessary. And that 
really bugged me and I felt really annoyed because like I chose this book like no offense to the author but I was like you did not need to put that in there like no fucking shit like yeah you and every almost every other paranormal book that we read um and and it's so interesting that you had that reaction because like when you chose zombies I was like huh paranormal zombies are not all that common they happen for sure and there's that series by rebecca royce where the zombies are actually paranormal instead of like scientifically based phenomena thing that happens but like zombies are typically sci-fi and okay fine but the readers cross over so the idea that the author felt the need to call it out I also felt was a little awkward and that wasn't the only thing that that uh, she was specifically saying preface that it was a slow burn and if you're looking to jump right into the sex where there is no build up blah 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 and then like the chapter first three. chapter three <laughs> they're fucking in an alley and I was like um <laughs> wait a minute i i i don't know if i can trust your forward anymore do we have different definitions like i mean like i get it and i feel like if somebody is looking for a scientific zombie book then that's something that should be in the synopsis not after you buy the book yeah i mean like it was kindle limited so it was fine but like if i was looking for a necromancy novel i guess i don't know i don't know but um i just thought it was like it was very off-putting to me i wonder if she is a romance novelist trying to break into science fiction and so she made that distinction to kind of break away from romance could be there could be a thousand reasons she wanted to put that forward in, and it could be like beta readers read it and then we're like oh wait a minute this isn't at all what i expected from your book and then she wrote the foreword to be like yeah it's not what you expected but here's the thing (laughs) that it's gonna be so so is this the part where i can talk about the science (laughs) yeah i think so I I sort of loved how they explained <laughs> how the zombie apocalypse happened because it's so doable. <laughs> Wait, which oh, oh god, I I read so many zombie apocalypse books and movies. <laughs> Basically from what I remember, somebody stole animals that were being used for science. Mm-hmm rescued them quote unquote and I think it was a bunny I believe is what they said (laughs) they gave it to someone and the animal bit someone and that's how it all started I don't remember that that. I remember them saying that a scientist was trying to come up with something that um, a a vaccine that would prevent all diseases and it ended up just bypassing the whole immune system and killing you from the inside out which way let's not overreach, shall we, humans? <laughs> <laughs> right? Take like, one at a time. Much. Thank you. <laughs> let's take them as they come. Let's take them as they come. <laughs> but like all, I feel like all zombie books come like that. Like, um, but the animal human crossover, especially after the recent pandemic that uh, why do i call it recent as if we're not still living in it um <laughs> right. i felt the same i was like um is it too too soon too, too, soon? <laughs> too soon to call it recent <laughs> um yeah like it's that's that's totally how they happen and yeah. they met, they say pandemic and i was all i mean obviously we're in the, we're still <laughs> dealing with pandemic but i was like oh my god so morty mortimer halo tried to create a vaccine that could protect against almost any disease obviously he was unsuccessful there wasn't <laughs> obviously there was an accident in his lab when one of his test animals was taken by an animal charity and given to a family as a pet and my <laughs> thought was like thanks Peta. 
<laughs> or what was that? Um, oh my god, uh, it was one of the the Click Commander movie. You guys know that movie, probably not. Um, Jay and Silent Bob. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. So when I I don't know about you guys, but when I first started reading this book. Okay, so you go in and there's a map, right? You you dive into the book and there's a map. So I'm like, yes, I like a map. I do like a map. Um, I do love a map also. Um, I feel like with maps, especially with multi-books in one series, I love that. Um, but just going in from the beginning, I didn't feel like I had a good understanding of what exactly happened. I mean, I think I feel like they did eventually I, talk about it, but I didn't feel like I understood the whole different why there are different regions and what this does. And and these people have electricity and these people didn't. And I don't know if that's just because I did not absorb the book or because um, I feel like usually in books like this, that it's very set up within the first chapter or two. Like what what's going on? And I did not I did not get that from this book I, I and think it was fairly clear yeah candy's happened. face says she did <laughs> i i bookmarked it right in the beginning actually i didn't bookmark it right in the beginning but the first time they started talking about like where stuff was which was when almost immediately when she was picking people up from the docks i went back and bookmarked it so i could go back and look every time i like needed to reference the thing um and probably that's why, like, as they were talking and I was going back and looking at the map, it made a lot of sense to me. But anytime I, anytime they mentioned a place and I wasn't clear about where it was and I couldn't remember where it was, I just went back and looked. So I felt like it was woven well into the storytelling about where stuff was. I'm a rebel. I didn't use a fucking map. Yeah, I took one look either. at it. I said, I don't know what the fuck this is for. And I moved on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one having to find my fucking way through this place. Why do I need a map? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I did only go back and look at it at the end. I was like, okay. <laughs> Just because I was not planning I'm on. I'm going to go look at it right now and judge the hell out of the map. I mean, <laughs> I looked at it all of the time. I probably looked oh, at it. That's what it was. Like, I saw the 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 um, map, and I was like, it looks uh -huh. like um, a digestive tract. It does. <laughs> it does. And I feel like that was maybe on purpose. Here uh, is the liver. <laughs> <laughs> the pancreas would be. It does look like a little bit yeah, of a the train like tract. A, would be the pancreas. Yeah. <laughs> we needed one of these for the sea monsters, mate. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. That would have been awesome. Yes, please. Thank this, you. This is how that two-foot dick fit in there. <laughs> Ooh, for yeah. reals. Um, I, yes. Uh, new maps for new types of books. Anywho, I really did use the map a lot, but that's just the kind of weird Well, now that I look at it, I'm am. like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> like, huh? All right. Yeah, the map I made in my head was close. There you go. Look at you go, Lisa. I couldn't have made a map in my head. I had to go back and look. <laughs> <laughs> so, meeting the guy, she met Griffin in the ring, and then they walked away. Like, okay, whatever. Well, after they fucked, of course, in the alleyway, because why wouldn't you? Um, I would. And the best part, like, I loved the scene where she's like, where's your, they're like, oh, no, we're like four, not three. And they're like, where, she's like, where's your fourth? And I was like, bah, I bet I can guess who that is. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that before. Right? Like, I loved that. I was like, okay. I was you like, and where's Griffin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't introduce a hot, sexy Viking good motherfucker. Good fuck. <laughs> right? Know, like, Rip, pull your pants down and just fuck you in an alley because yeah. it feels good and give you the advice that there is 
other ways to release stress and then be like, oh, but that's it. That was that. No. The end. <laughs> Yum, dilly, yum, dilly, yummy. And I do, I, I so, so love Colt coming up to her at the bar and being all like, hey, baby, especially since like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the good part. Ah, group sex at the commune. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Can we Karen. talk about the commune? <laughs> mm-hmm. I laughed throughout the entire description of the commune. Did you? Yes, because it's I so wanted to join like, immediately. <laughs> I was like, this is so awesome. Mm. You know, we're here to talk to you about this person that we're looking for. Okay, but let's do morning affirmations or whatever the fuck. <laughs> and then we can talk about that. Um, uh, and make yourselves. And they were like, okay. And, and here's snacks. all the snacks. We have snacks. Eat the snacks. <laughs> Tucker's realization of the fuck the brownies <laughs> and like the food is laced with drugs <laughs> was so cute because she's so clueless to it. Mm-hmm. Well, and we all knew, right? When yeah. they started like eating the food, we were like, <laughs> uh, like, okay, it's not a Fay novel, and it's not like, oh, you can't eat the Fay's food. But I was yeah. like, it's a fucking hippie commune. <laughs> Jason, yeah, you can't like, eat eat the fucking food. <laughs> Yeah, and then all these asshole questions which, and get some answers. Yeah, and I love that. Let's go to the orgy, and then she's like, ah, "Let's not." Let's. And what was the room called? The room of a. Uh, oh, that was a good one. What was that room called? Contemplation. <laughs> So I, I totally highlighted I, it, I'm sure. Because I highlighted and noted a lot in this book. The sensory room. Ah. Uh, the sensory room. That's right. <laughs> that sounds like a room you would send somebody to, like, calm down in. Like, contemplate. Right, but like, it has like, a bed hanging in the center or of it. Or, like, so. <laughs> right out there very trippy high. I want to take notes for when I start my commune um, that we should need to have a sensory room with a bed hanging in the middle of it. I I just like as a big girl. Yeah. But as a big girl, like the people like just jumping on that bed that's hanging in the center of the room. I was like, aren't you guys like a little bit worried about whether or not that hanging bed can take all of your weight? A hundred percent. She, she, basically got like thrown on the bed right or like right but then but then griffin like lowered himself into it so yeah but then the other two guys jump on it that's a lot at that point at that point everybody's dick is out who cares (laughs) if the bed breaks or not (laughs) so who cares if the bed breaks or not for sure (laughs) yes i love that but like i'm i'm with you candy like like I'm afraid to sit in chair. <laughs> like, what's gonna happen? What, uh, 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 is, can I sit in you this know, chair? And I, I'm pretty sure after the amount of brownies that they had, <laughs> the last thing they were worried about was a furniture. I love that. I would love that I, for I me. Love, I would love that for me. <laughs> I would love that I for love myself. How that scene played out. Honestly, it was yeah, so good. That was really. <laughs> It was mm-hmm. so fucking hot, and okay. So the only thing that, about it that was like er, for two seconds for me um, was uh, so f- hot as fuck that uh, Colt is giving Jace a BJ over in the corner, and Griffin's all like eating her mm-hmm. out on the yeah. bed, and, <laughs> but. She sees that and like her attention is immediately drawn over there. So she is also like us oh, or sure. some of us a, <laughs> a voyeur to the core. Right. Uh-huh. So she's all like, oh, over uh-huh. there. And then Griffin crawls up and I love that they all have their different nicknames for her. But that's like very common in reverse harems that they uh-huh. all have a different nickname. That's true. For her. I didn't even think about it, but you are right. 
And he crawls yeah. up and he's like, hey, hotshot, do I have to work harder to get your attention on me? Yum. Yes. Dilly, yum, yum, yes, yum. you do. Because I'm <laughs> high as fuck. <laughs> Which means and I want to watch these people. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he does. Yeah. <laughs> he and does do his does he. Now. he does his due diligence to and get her, whole... his attention on her but then the whole time we've got <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So, of audits and shit <laughs> so sorry but well, then like the whole time I kept going back to Noah's words to her right and Noah was, is just oh, yes, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> Like, he wasn't even, like, jerking off in the corner or anything. He, he is just, just watching. watching. Oh, which he had said, my. like, watch mm-hmm. you. Like, God. it was specifically, like, what he said, like, watch you with a bunch of guys mm-hmm. getting all the dick you can handle or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's hot. And he's, like, standing there watching. How? F- oh, yes, yes. All like of the Noah. yes. I like no. <laughs> I just like that. I did enjoy the voyeur part because I think that's hot. Like, I I really definitely enjoyed that part. I mean, the whole thing was fine, but I thought that that was different than some of the things that we've seen before. And the fact that the guys brought the attention back to them that were working, working, on her i don't know i have a better way to put that yeah. um nope. but fucking her yeah <laughs> yeah uh, the single critique i believe for this book and it is simply because i understand that this is romance and this is not erotica but i wish it were erotica because it wouldn't have ended and then there was so much more i want more <laughs> <laughs> i I'm sure there was plenty more. Yes, I wanted to hear about. I want to hear more. about all of the more. Please and thank you. <laughs> I also really, really liked that the whole guy on guy blowjob scene was not like awkward for anyone. No, one. other guys, which was great. And it yeah, just, like, I agree. The, like a couple chapters beforehand, like I don't, I can't remember like who was flirting with whom. But mm-hmm. I think but it was, was Colt. Thing. It was yeah. Colt that that was like, if you ask nicely or some shit, like yeah. some back and forth. And I was like, oh, we're gonna get to see the boys kiss. <laughs> 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 Not yeah. read, I like the boys kiss, like see it, like uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that too. Sexy hot guys. Yeah, it was lovely, and it was so lovely that after. They left there. There was like no prob, and there was check-in <laughs> in after. That was something that was interesting to me that there was no awkwardness. Like it was like okay, we're all high. We fucking yeah. fucked all of us. Like hey. literally, it's fine. There was a good build up to it. <laughs> there yeah. was yeah. Griffin had gone down on her in the strip club, which is weird as fuck. That was like the weirdest no, that, scene in the whole fucking book. Griffin, oh, I agree that that no, was weird. I'm sorry. I said Griffin. It was cold. It was cold. Yeah, it was cold. Which was so fucking it hot. Was also, <laughs> yes, agreed. Hot. Agreed that was hot. But so fucking weird. And um, dirty. Oh, yeah, so dirty. <laughs> so dirty and so great. But like, yes. like dirty. But like dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and. Noah but had fucked her in the bathroom, <laughs> and Griffin had fucked her in the Can hallway, we- and Colt had kissed her in the it's um, a goddamn apocalypse bathroom. You get your orgasms of whatever. You can, so, yeah, you get your orgasms where you Fucking, can. So, yeah. like, they had led up to this thing, and then when they were mm-hmm. done, there was like no apologies, and I yeah. loved that. It was. I like, like that too. Yeah. I love the ease of all of the relationships because even mm-hmm. when Noah is like, "What does oh. it feel like to fuck somebody that you can't stand?" and no. I'm like, "Oh, yo, that drool." Was fucking, <laughs> that was fucking weird. I'm, I did not care for that part. I'm gonna be Why? honest. I was like, "Oh, because God, I, yes. God, this, I mean, like, okay, yeah, like if I knew how the thing was gonna end up." It was just a little bit of degradation, and it was hot as fuck. Cause like I like degradation. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I, ooh, I probably shouldn't have said it like that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that. Shit. There was just 
so much more communicated to us as the readers Mm -hmm. with such little words yeah in this entire book and uh, that's why i'm so irritated that the author didn't have a good editor because this was a brilliant story it could have been told better Mm -hmm. and some of the things in it some of the wording and some of the The repetition of they threw their hands up in a disarming motion okay we get it everybody's like karen that sounds suspicious to me (laughs) no 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 it's sus sounds all the cool kids are saying sus (laughs) uh, that's what i thought i'm like not to be a dick but i was like like suspicious like i know presh there's no suspicious i love that this book even had a mention of baby shark (laughs) <laughs> right. I did have a mention of Baby Shark. <laughs> they were going to get married and they were going to dance to Baby Shark. How cute. That? <laughs> <laughs> I was the remix. Because uh, worth it. And Candy, you said like the last stand in ragtag. That was a really cool scene. Like <laughs> it was straight out of Shaun of Zombie Dead. Apocalypse. <laughs> Shaun of the Dead, Zombie <laughs> Apocalypse. <laughs> film history where like, yeah it's like the somebody has released a press. plethora of zombs in the streets and these people who are like uh i i love miss francis who Fucking is grandma. The, <laughs> grandma the goat keeper. Yeah. she's the goat keeper so there's like you know some Ladies of the night. There's some <laughs> teachers up in the bar with their guns and their Molotov cocktails to like run things over. And they're just going to make their last stand in the ragtag bar and try to like hold out. And that was a fucking beautiful scene. It was just a beautiful scene. I loved it. But like every one of those scenes that we ever see in those movies, the only way anybody survives is because somebody comes from the outside and rescues them. I like that scene too. I thought it was very movie. (laughs) I could like really easily visualize what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely would have like great background music playing in the jukebox in the bar. Yes. (laughs) What What was it they played in Shaun of the Dead? It was it was Abba, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think Probably. we're gonna have to add that song to the playlist. Yeah. Uh, don't stop me now. Yes. No, no, don't stop me now. <laughs> yeah, it's don't stop me now. That's what they. That was what was on the jukebox when they were beating so the we're, zombies. Let's add, let's add that to the playlist. Why did I? Oh, I, I, that's such an insult to say that Queen is all the. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so are we ready to fuck ourselves with Karen? I am. Always. I know I am <laughs> always ready to fuck myself with Karen. Get it, girl. What? Wow. So. <laughs> Mother trucker, yo. This is something a little different. <laughs> I honestly was like, what the f- As always, like, what am I going to do with this book? Like, immediately when I was, like, when I talked to John about it, and he was like, well, if it's four guys, you're going to need a calendar. Um, but we've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But she, even though she didn't really use her sword very much, she did talk about having her sword with her all the mm-hmm. time. So we found this on buzzloveshop, buzzloveshop.com. Um, and it is a sword handle for your dildos. Glorious. <laughs> also, like, I can imagine uh-huh. on that last scene... With the like ladies of the night fighting their way through like the zombie horde with a dildo, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would that be? Oh my god, I love the idea of adding like insult to injury. Like, hi, I'm, I, you, this is how you go. This is how you go. You go with a dildo to the face. 
next. So we chose the, and by we, I mean our number one fan and I, because uh, he definitely helped me with this one. <laughs> <laughs> the Realm Drag- oh, Drago's <laughs> Sword Handle. Um, $99.95. Made out of polyutherane 11.3 inches long. Um, this is such a dude thing. I can <laughs> totally it? tell that <laughs> it is so fucking cool. God helped. <laughs> it is like it's basically a sword handle for your dildos. Like you could have sword fights with this thing and then fuck yourself. Uh, or never mind. You could just have sword fights with this thing if you're a dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever you want. The detail is so cool, though. But it's, what kind of dildo do you put on this? Like, how do you well, get a dildo that fits on it? I don't. If you scroll uh, down, why not combine one of the other Realm products for this great oh, okay. blah, blah, blah? So, the dragon mm. Mm. looks mm. like a dragon dildo. Like, they have <laughs> in this, in the same, on the same website, buzzlove.com, they have. Sorry, buzzloveshop.com. They have the dildos that you can buy for $44.95 or so. Let me go back and see how much the other ones are. Um, I have to say, I was confused. I thought the long part was the, like... No, it is just... (laughs) Ouch, no. It is just a sword handle. (laughs) I also feel that Colt and Jace would definitely have one hell of a time playing with these things. Yes, they would. Yes, they would. This is like, this is a multi-use toy for sure. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Oh, hello there. It's Lee from Lasers and Lockets podcast, the bi-weekly, always nerdy podcast celebrating strong and complex female characters in science fiction and fantasy entertainment. Sound right up your alley? Join me as I sneak aboard spaceships, adventure with elves, and hunt artifacts threatening to ruin the world's day. Oh, and so, so much more. Get your nerd on and subscribe now on your favorite podcast app. Ratings and your five-word summary. Um, So, Lisa, let's start with you. I give it a four. I really like the book. Um... If there was more, if it was a series, I would read the rest of the series for sure. Um, and my five words is go back to the commune. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. I have to agree. That's all. Yes. That's our own commune. I love it. Uh, Candy, what are, what's your rating? Um, summary? So this morning... <laughs> when I put my rating on, I put it on as a four. And my five words were badasses boning seeking editor. Because <laughs> although I did really, really love the book and I love the story, it does need editing. Um, there's some typos. And, and frankly, the story could just be smoothed out a bit, I think, by a really good editor. Because the story is fucking huh. fantastic. And it needs just a little bit of love by someone, frankly. Okay. But I gave it a four then. Um. You get a <laughs> five, you go, though. You? <laughs> it's, hard to, like, it's hard to get a five from you. I have masturbated <laughs> twice today just thinking about this book so it got the five Love it. <laughs> yes it's probably gonna buy from candy so shit so yeah that um, is i awesome. like um the oh, thought really? of boys kissing <laughs> let's just say that yes. <laughs> and yeah that is all <laughs> watching the boys kiss karen what did you rate it what are your five words I hated this book. I hated it so much. (laughs) I loved this book. I so fucking love this book. I think that the sex was so good in this book. And it wasn't gross like I thought it was going to be when you said zombie. (laughs) (laughs) Zombie smut. And I'm like, gross. It was so not gross. Um, So I gave it a five. Because I really liked it. And um, 
my five words were walking dead can be sexy. I love it. (laughs) I am so glad that you love this book. You like all of you actually like, um, I, you know that I very rarely get to read second books because I just don't find the time to do it. I would read a second book from this one. Nice. (laughs) Okay. So, um, I'm opposite. <laughs> uh, I would probably not read a second book. I don't know. It's just because I was reading on a different device and I'm not used to reading on or what, but um, like it was a three. Um, my five words are unique word, unique world, more zombies, please. Like I, <laughs> like I read this as like, Hey, this is going to be a zombie book. So I was like ready for necromancers. I was ready for like, obviously I didn't read, I have not read this book before I chose it. So I guess I was ready for anything. I was like, this is a fucking zombie book. We have never done a zombie book. (laughs) I'm sure we've had necromancers probably. I don't know. I've read a lot of necromancy sort of ish books, but like, I'm, I, uh, I'm ready for like some fucking zombies. And it was just like, Oh, there's a zombie over here. There's a zombie over there. I, but I was ready for the like zombie apocalypse book where they played like a big part. Like I'm running away and I'm so scared and let's fucking in like, I don't know my bunker. I don't, I don't really know what I was expecting, but I don't think I would read another. I would not read book two. Um, we just goes to show how fun it is that we have such different, <laughs> like, like different feelings about books because all of the books that I would read, I would read a book to you are like no, and I'm like yes, give me book two, give me all the books. Um, so I gave it a three, which is like I think the lowest I've ever. Gone. No, it's not. Um, uh, and my no, to, I probably gave something at two. Okay. Um. And my five words are unique world, more zombies, please. Next time on What the Smut, we will be discussing Ice Planet Barbarians, a sci-fi alien romance by Ruby Dixon. You'd think being abducted by aliens would be the worst thing that could happen to me. And you'd be wrong, because now the aliens are having ship trouble and they've left their cargo of human women, including me, on an ice planet. And the only native inhabitant I've met He's big, horned, blue, and really, really has a thing for me.